Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Friends, Facts, and Fiction. As always, this podcast is made possible by our local convenience stores, the misappropriation of history, and you. And now to your hosts, Justin Hammonds, Brant Bramlett, and Drew Shellnut. What's up? What's happening, world? It's a podcast called Friends, Facts, and Fiction. And uh, we're coming at you season four, more to explore, episode eight today. And we got three mm-hmm. critters out of the creature corner. Uh-oh. Or critter corner or, or something like that. I don't even remember anymore. It? I don't know. I don't even anyway, know. Anyway, I'm just Creature corner, yeah. yeah. Creature yeah. corner. Creature yeah. corner. They're, inter- uh, they're interchangeable to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Pretty same. Creature, pretty critter, same. you know. Yeah. Critter creatures. Yeah. Well, I'm Justin Hammers. I'm looking at my boy Drew Shona. What's up? And my boy Grand Bramma. Hello. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we're back on it with these hot fizz acts. You know what I'm saying? I hope everybody's doing well out there, still enjoying this new year. Um, you know, 2022. Um, yeah. Any, uh, how y'all feeling? Everybody good? Yeah. No? no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, a uh, you know, it's a little rough start to the year, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We all kind of, uh, kind of been jaded by the last two years. So mm-hmm. not, not mm-hmm. much more to expect yeah. there. Yeah. It's also that uh, that seasonal demotivation in the air. Mm-hmm. Man, that actually <laughs> has kind of been a tough thing for me. Yeah. I'm trying to decide if I'm like just recovering from last weekend, you know, because Justin and I went down to our old hometown area, married off some of our bestest oh, yeah. of friends. I saw the homies, um, uh, Jason and Laurel Dobbins. Congratulations, you guys. Congratulations, congratulations on getting married. Very or, cool. Act, like, Publicly married, the um, actual hmm? ceremonially married, I right, guess. Right, ceremonially right. married, because <laughs> they married back on uh, the dear day of November seventeenth. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's how they do. I know they got this uh, this fool talking right here, right now, who kind of has a fear of public speaking uh, to be the officiant. So nice. <laughs> <laughs> Several days of stress leading up to a moment of pretty severely gripping fear. (laughs) (laughs) Toe curling, if you will. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, celebratory drinking to follow. You know what I mean? So I said, I did it. Mm -hmm. And so then I did it. Did it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, exactly. That shit's real out here. Um, Got people laughing, got people crying. So I feel like I did my job pretty well. Although the funniest part of it, I got to say, was... um, uh, the the best uh, or the man of honor right, is the wife's. Uh, I mean, the bride's best friend. He um, had the rings, handed them to me, and then um, Jason's ring. The band on it was a little too wide for those little like felt slots that mm-hmm. go in ring boxes, you mm-hmm. know. And so it was like pushing up against the lid of the box, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I get the ring box handed to me, take the lid off, and it goes. <laughs> Bing, 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 on the ground. <laughs> I thought he was doing a bit the whole time. <laughs> turns out it was not a bit. <laughs> and it literally, and just, you know, because I probably could have planned a bit almost as good, but mm-hmm. the fact that it was real, probably even better. But it was literally, as I was saying, rings are made of a precious metal, and they're more precious by you wearing them. And it goes, flip, bing, 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 in that moment. <laughs> and out of sheer, like, you know, shock and fear. I went, oh, 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 you know, <laughs> <laughs> like an old person. And, nice, uh, <laughs> nice. That was good. And then I was so frazzled by it. I put it like on my paper because I was like, "Fuck that ring box! Yeah. I'm not even going anywhere near that again." Yeah. You know, and it slid right <laughs> around my fingers back onto the ground for a second. Folly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At that point, everybody was like, uh, wait, is this motherfucking for real? Like, uh, you know, like the classic bit, you drop something and you try and pick it over and you kick it across the yeah. room. Yeah. It, was, it was almost that bad. <laughs> <laughs> luckily, like somebody said, luckily they didn't just like catch that perfect roll. And, just and then just go all the way down the, the congregation. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure at that point I would have just handed him my ring and yeah. we would have swapped later. Just, just <laughs> right, right. this real quick. Yeah. <laughs> but... Everybody left with a smile on their face, and um, yeah, we did it. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Uh, it's funny, uh, Dobbins, uh, Jason's uh, parents and Laurel's parents, it took them both, uh, all four of them, a minute to recognize me. Oh, yeah? I remember who I was. Because, <laughs> you know, I used to see them, like, you know, at least once a month for years, and now it's, like, once in a decade <laughs> or more at this point. And, uh, like, halfway through the reception, Dom's dad, Jason comes up, or Jason's dad comes up. He's like, oh, 
Yeah, man, how you been, man? I was like, I've been good, bro. I've been just waiting, you know. Y'all yeah. old, I don't want to, like, <laughs> throw your brain off or no shit, right? But, you know, like, yeah, I know you, bro. Like, I've stayed at your house before, bro. I've helped clean out your garage once. Like, uh-huh. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And uh, Laurel's dad was like, oh, Justin, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, man. It's good to see you. It's been so long. I was like, yeah, it's been a minute. It's mm-hmm. been a minute. I'm surprised uh took y'all that long to remember me. But also, <laughs> I wasn't surprised, you know, because it had been that long. Yeah. And, you know, a lot happens and a lot happens in a decade. Mm-hmm. And given 2020, it was a decade all in itself. So mm-hmm. it was good to see everybody, man. It's been a minute since I've seen a lot of those folks, actually. Yeah, same. Throwback. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A fair amount of them was like, you know, two years at least. And that used to be, you know, daily folk. <sighs> yeah, everyday occurrences. Like yeah. literally waking up with these people sleeping on couches like every day almost. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Good times, man. It was, it was nice. It was, uh, a journey to get back through the snow. That was interesting. Hope everybody's safe yeah. through all these old snowstorms that are popping up everywhere. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That are mm-hmm. super normal for this time of the year, this much. Yeah, exactly. It's always a surprise in the south, though. It's like, oh my god, it's so cold. It's snow, and it's like, yeah, well, it's January. Bro. Yeah, I bro. Mean, like it's January. Most of the country is getting this mm-hmm. shit uh, till like May. Yeah. <laughs> Although, still, I, well, we are expecting... in the south, though, but, like, you know, Midwest, up north, I mean, they get snow until, like, April oh, or sure. May. You know? I just wasn't expecting for us to have three snows so far. No, mm-hmm. no. It's and, crazy. Uh, and also, for like, us. looking at the forecast and it's saying, like, it's 16 degrees in Nashville. And you look at, like, Denver, Colorado, and it's, like, 48. And you're, like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, crazy. wait, wait, what? No. <clears throat> I, think the, um, I think the other week when we had all the snowstorm, there was a fucking crazy-ass fire in Colorado. Mm-hmm. It there was, was set off by a cult named the Twelve Tribes. Oh, geez. They lit a shed on fire and it ended up like burning down thousands of homes. No shit. Real talk. Twelve Tribes. Uh, look that shit up. That shit is some weird motherfuckers, but like yeah. some, some creepy, like uh, weird. black people belong to white people. Fucking like no technology, no um, parents. Like the whole communion is your parent. Weird. So you don't know who your parents mm-hmm. are and shit. Like it's, it's been going on since like the 70s, bro. Mm-hmm. Up there in the hills of Colorado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be yeah. careful up but, there. But uh, it, was, it was just odd. It was some odd times, bro. 2022 has uh, got a weird start to it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit as well. But, um, but yeah, we're, um, we're doing it. We're living it. Yeah. We're, um, yeah. And stop fucking traveling. <laughs> God damn it. You stupid motherfuckers. Yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna sit it down. I'm definitely going to sit my ass down. I'm going to say minute. something mean and I'm not drunk right now. <laughs> Do you guys not fucking realize what you're doing? Mm-hmm. I mean, f- for all the seriousness, stop fucking traveling. Stop. Just fucking quit going and fucking mouth fucking other people when you mm. go to other places or whatever the fuck well, you're well, doing man. because Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> mouth fuck who you like to mouth fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but keep it <laughs> private. Sure. Don't just start walking out and mouth yeah, fucking a yeah, whole crowd, yeah. you know? You can't do that. Yeah. No, right. Was, uh, There's a term called super spreader. Yeah. I've been uh I've been in my feelings about how much I've been traveling, honestly, in these times because the shit's spiking again. And I'm like, I was traveling during the holidays and I got I got fucking sick, got COVID, mm-hmm. got clean from that, and I traveled again. I'm like, hey, I need to sit my ass down for like <laughs> at least two months. Like at least two months, just sit my ass down. So I think that's gonna be the the game plan for me. I agree. Plus, I need to save some fucking money. Cause I'm not going all... anywhere, man. I'm, I'm going to tuck in, get ready for spring. Yeah. It's all about that stack up the money for the summer, bro. Mm-hmm. Wintertime grind for the summertime flex. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sure. Yeah, you know the vibes. Uh, yeah. You know, back to the basics. That's great. Yeah. So I've got this uh, song of the day of the week here. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, entitled 777 by Silk Sonic. Ah, yes. This is the uh, best off of the the album. Let's uh, play it. You guys, you guys will get <laughs> a great song. You guys, will, <laughs> you guys will get a snippet. Here's a little little thirty seconds of sexy. I love this song so much. <laughs> Yeah, it's dope, man. Silk Sonic is uh, I, uh, yeah, top notch. 
Love the intro, and I appreciate that that's all you gave us. Yep. But the uh, choruses are truly, truly what make that sound. No, no, they are. Yeah. And then that double chorus on the way out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you get Bootsy screaming in the background. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. So good. Telling it's you, so dude. good. Fly, fly is me. Just hit, it's a different chord for me. But I do love 777. It, it is also a great song. Yes, yes. Silk Sonic, check it out. That album slaps. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you're ever feeling down, that's I'll true. Tell you what, press play on that motherfucker. Or just listen to our driving. podcast for a couple more seasons, and I'm sure we'll cover most of the tracks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 About to say, it's out it's there now. What I'm listening to uh, often. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's uh, definitely a, a daily rotate, if you will. But yeah, like I'm saying, man, um, hope y'all are doing good well out there. Um, hope you're enjoying your day. Uh, your drive, you know, your, your bath, <clears throat> your, um, house cleaning, or, you know, just relaxing by the fire with a nice scotch or tequila, you know. Um, I cleaned my kitchen today. Oh, look at that. It's yeah. yeah, cute. It's nice. Yeah. Were you listening to the podcast? Mm-mm. Oh, well, yeah. not an example for the people. <laughs> <laughs> you lost your chance on that one. I thought about the podcast, though. <laughs> there you go. Relatively that. recently, Drew as randomly, I don't know why it stuck in my head, though. He just randomly said, clean your kitchens. And I was like, as I'm cleaning my kitchen, I'm like, he'd be happy for me because I'm cleaning my kitchen. <laughs> and there you go. And there you go. Keep it, keep it clean. Do you know? Keep it clean. You have you know to. Keep it clean. But anyway, we hit you with these hot fizz acts. Hot facts. Hot coming facts, from the facts. critter corner, creature corner, corner of critter creatures. Yeah. So, uh, what you got first for us, boy, Drucifer? I'm going to call this episode Flying Panda Penis. Love okay. it. Okay. Flying Panda Penis. Yep. So, <laughs> Let's get into that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so the first uh, creature in the corner is the tarantula hawk. Oh, my. Okay, cool. That's the one I got pulled up, actually. Yeah, yeah me too. Sweet. Isn't that wild? Yeah. That's fucking yeah. crazy. So, Did either of y'all see the picture of the guy with his finger? Yes. Yeah. What the fuck? It's terrifying. What yeah. an idiot. Yeah, he's a terrifying. fucking... Yeah, this is what... It's, apparently, it's one of the worst stings you can get. This is... The tarantula hawk is a spider wasp uh, that preys on tarantulas. Tarantula <laughs> hawks uh, belong to... Uh, to any of the many species in their genera, Pepsis or Hemipepsis. Mm. Uh, okay, okay. They are one of the largest paras- uh, parasitoid wasps, using their sting to paralyze their prey before dragging it <laughs> to a brood nest as living food. Oh, wow. A single egg is laid on the prey, hatching, to which the larva wakes up and eats it alive. Right. Yeah, so that's like some, some Jeffrey Dahmer <clears throat> alien type <laughs> shit. Sure. Like, get, sure. You, get you zombified, drag you off to the spot, mm-hmm. and then alien infect them with the kid mm-hmm. in the chest. Mm-hmm. And get Damn. eaten from the inside out. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Whew. Common species uh, are up to five, or so two inches long, making them among the largest of wasps. Think about that. A two-inch yeah. long fucking wasp. That's a hornet, I mean, I'm dog. looking at it in the homie palm right yeah. here, and that yep. shit is massive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And have a uh, black-blue bodies and bright, rust-colored wings. The vivid coloration found on their bodies and especially wings, as an uh, aposematism is what it's called, which is essentially is just like scare off predators. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which aposematism sounds like some kind of made up word by a three year old, but uh, apparently it's not. Uh, p- peacocking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. In, a, in a sense. 100%. The opposite. Uh, yeah. 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 <clears throat> you know, their you know long I mean? legs you know I mean? have hooked claws for uh, grappling their victims. Kind of like Jinko jeans, if you will. You, know, you see somebody yeah. wearing those, and you yeah. say, "Oh, okay, stay away." I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna interact yeah, with yeah. that individual. I don't right. need to listen to Disturbed or right. Slipknot right now. Right. So, yeah. Oh, jeans, yeah. Bro, bro. oh no, he's got a corn shirt too. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, with the with the wristbands and the fingerless glove. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Got it. Oh. We won't be friends. You do you. <laughs> No problems. Wherever it pops your clutch, but in your Matrix boots, my guy. Wallet we're not, chains. We're not going to the, <laughs> you know, early bird special together Mm-mm. at Shoney's. Mm-mm. <laughs> uh, so the stinger of the female, Pepsis uh, grossa, can be up to seven millimeters long. And the powerful sting is considered one of the most painful insect stings in the world. Yeah, actually, yeah, I, I found a little pull quote about that. <clears throat> Uh, one researcher described the pain as immediate, excruciating, unrelenting pain that simply shuts down one's ability to do anything except scream. Oh, God. <laughs> Hell yeah. Woo! Yeah, that's, yeah that sounds, 
Sounds like my mental state sometimes. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, oh. That's fucking brutal. <laughs> now, I've got like the doctor's chart. How's your pain? Like happy face, sad face. Yeah. At the very end of it is tarantula hawk. <laughs> <laughs> Can you think right now? <laughs> Uh, he can't think no, right now. Uh, I think it's a he's, tarantula hawk. He's been screaming for three fucking hours. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on. Shoot, but get get the morphine now. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. we got a media call for morphine over in room four. We got a tarantula hawk. We got a, we got a tarantula hawk. We got a, we got a, we got a code tarantula hawk. T hawk sting. Got a T hawk sting. <laughs> we younger got, doctors. We got code blue, light blue, <laughs> rust. Oh, God. So the, the female tarantula hawk wasp stings a tarantula between the legs, paralyzing it, then drags the prey to a specially prepared burrow where a single egg is laid on the spider's abdomen and the burrow entrance is covered. Sex of the larvae is determined by fertilization. Fertilized eggs produce females, while unfertilized eggs produce males. Whoa. That's crazy. So they don't even need to asexual. Whoa. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Whoa, right? <laughs> when the wasp uh, larva hatches, it creates a small hole in the spider's abdomen, then enters and feeds voraciously, avoiding vital organs for as long as possible to keep the spider alive. Good God. After, after several weeks... The larva, the larva pupates. Finally, the wasp becomes an adult and emerges from the spider's abdomen to continue the life cycle. Man, what an evolution of a, of a creature, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's scary. Mm-hmm. To, to, yeah, to, that's how you're birthed. What do they eat? That's crazy. I mean, the larva obviously each, eats a tarantula. So adult, what are they, adult, they, sna- they snack around a little hole to put the eggs in. Adult uh, tarantula hawks are uh, nectar, uh, nectar. They like nectar. Okay. Nectar, nectarivious or whatever is what it's called. The consumption of <laughs> fermented fruit sometimes intoxicates them to the point of the flight becomes difficult. Oh, nice. So they like to get fucked up. They too. like to get drunk and fly. Yeah. While the wasps tend to be most active in the daytime and summer, they tend to avoid high, t- uh, they tend to avoid high temperatures, oh, weird. which is kind of weird because they like to hunt during the daytime. Um, mm-hmm. The male tarantula hawk does not hunt. Both males and females feed on flowers of milkweeds, western soapberry trees, or mesquite trees. Male tarantula hawks have been observed practicing a behavior called hilltopping, in which they sit atop tall plants and watch for passing females ready to produce. The males can become resident defenders of the favorable reproduction spots for hours in the afternoon. Females are not very aggressive in that they are hesitant to sting. But the sting is extraordinarily painful, so, like so, I said before. So, so the male tarantula hawk just like chills and just waits for a He just sits, up on, he like, sits hey, up on a leaf hey, like, what up? What up, see my flower? You like this flower? Yeah. Holler at your boy real quick. Come get some of this tree. <laughs> you know, like what? <laughs> Mesquite tree, baby. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's funny that they are premeditative murdering uh-huh. fucking tarantulas to hatch their eggs, but then they're just snacking on like the nicest, softest things. <laughs> Flowers and nectar. And mm-hmm. shit. I also kind of they're brutal murderers. <laughs> I just love wonder. the idea of like that's basically the mating dance. Is like yeah. the female on the stripper pole, if you will, mm-hmm. is injecting a larva into a tarantula and then dragging it into a like a little hole it dug out. Yeah, and that's the male wasp time to go. Oh yeah, <laughs> hey, it's my I turn, see baby. You. Yeah. I see you, baby. But I also like I see uh, you getting there warm and ready for your boy. <laughs> that, that whole. <laughs> What a horrifying creature. <laughs> that whole hilltopping thing, though, like, it, says it sits up top of whatever, but it kind of reminds me of, you know, you see lizards, like, around in the south, you know, mm-hmm. and how they do, like, they do push-ups and mm-hmm. then do that little, like, little, thing. Like, like, mm-hmm. little, yeah. I can only imagine, like, <laughs> a wasp up on a leaf just like oh what's up, what's up? Uh, what's up? Uh, uh, you see uh, this acorn uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 99 100 101 <laughs> so worldwide distribution of tarantula hawks include areas of india to southeast asia africa europe australia and the americas oh good they're everywhere they're okay. everywhere I love it so i tar- figured <laughs> australia for sure oh oh um, yeah peg yeah, australia with anything <laughs> yeah Tarantula hawk species have been observed from as far north as Logan, Utah, and as far south as Argentina, with at least 250 species living in South America. Damn. 18 species of Pepsis and three species of Hemipepsis are found in the United States, primarily in the deserts of, uh, of the southwestern part of the United States. Good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in the southeast. So. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't have deserts, so we're <laughs> yeah, good. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the two species are difficult to distinguish, but uh majority of Pepsis grossa have metallic blue bodies and reddish antennae, which separates them from P. thisbe, which is the other grouping. Uh, both species have bright orange wings that become transparent near the tip. Talk a little bit more about the sting real quick. So the tarantula hawk wasps are relatively docile and rarely sting without provocation. However, the sting, particularly of the female, uh, is among the most painful of all insects, though the intense pain only lasts about five minutes. So that's not too bad. But, yeah, you have to scream for five minutes, I guess. One researcher described the pain as what Grant said earlier, Mm -hmm. immediate, excruciating, unrelenting pain that shuts down one's ability to do anything except scream, (laughs) Mm -hmm. which is fantastic. It sounds like one of those, like, uh, dick pills on on the TV. You know, it's like, may cause immediate, excruciating, unrelenting pain that makes you shut down everything but screaming (laughs) and death. (laughs) Side effects are longer and less than the cures. Oh, yeah. Every uh, every one of them. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Uh, Mental discipline simply does not work in these situations. (laughs) You don't say. I swear I've seen a YouTube video of some dumbass intentionally getting stung by one of these things. Probably. Probably. I think there's There's a guy. It definitely exists. That likes to be like, hey, this thing hurts a lot. Watch it bite me. And that's how he gets used to it. I've seen the one that he has like a doctor on site for after Mm. the pain or whatever. And they give him like either anti-venom or like treat him like almost Mm -hmm. immediately off camera type shit. But they have the initial reaction of how fuck it feels. And then, yeah. So that was that was uh that was really painful. So like, yeah, motherfucker, duh. Think <laughs> like, what did you did you expect it to feel good, motherfucker? Yeah. Like, so you guys yeah. watch hot ones, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So in terms of scale, the wasp sting is rated near the top of the Schmidt Sting Pain Index. Oh wow, it's a real thing. Yeah. Second only uh, to that of the bullet ant. I was about to say there's an ant that is fucking like really de- debilitate your ass. And it's described <laughs> as blinding, fierce, and shockingly electric. That's yeah. fucked. Yeah. So that means it fucks with your nerves if it's mm-hmm. electric. Yeah, it's your nervous mm-hmm. system. Yeah. yeah. Um, because of their extremely large stingers, very few animals are able to eat them. One of the few that can is the roadrunner. He me. Oh, look at that. Many predators, uh, pre- predatory animals avoid these wasps and many different insects mimic them, including various other wasps and bees, as well as moths, flies, and beetles. Aside from possibly uh, the possibility of triggering an allergic reaction, the sting is not dangerous and does not require medical attention. Local redness appears in most cases after the pain, and it lasts for up to a week. Mm. Interesting. All right, so, so that's it on the tarantula hawk. Got it. And uh, so, so avoid those things. Neither a tarantula nor a hawk. Next guy is a panda ant. Neither a panda nor an ant. Panda ant. This dude looks cool as fuck. Yeah. Got a little throwy on. Uh, you hear black and white spotted so up. It's not a tiny, tiny panda. No. I mean, I mean, you look real fast. And yeah, just away. like, uh, uh, panda fucking <laughs> ant. Or, you know, like, how'd that happen? <laughs> so there's some really cute insects out there. Panda. And one genus of especially cute insects is the... Uso or Eusphenolia, called the panda ant. Panda ants are actually not ants at all, but instead are wasps of the family, family Mutilid, Mutilidae, or whatever. That's wasps, uh, commonly called velvet ants. We have those in the south. Oh, nice. Here, you know, those mm-hmm. big fucking red ants mm-hmm. yeah. that mm-hmm. my grandmother used to call cow ants. Yeah. yeah. That so if you step on them, wasps. That you step on them. They don't fucking do shit, but yeah. just look up at you like, what, bitch? Well, yeah. Real crunchy. Yeah. Cr- yeah. Crunchy. Country, that? country. Yeah. Crunchy, country. <laughs> <laughs> we call those cow ants. What else do we call them? Something devil. Furry devil? I can't remember what it was, I don't know. what the hell they were called, but basically, but yeah, like you were saying, you try and step ants. on it, and it basically grabs your shoe and then just throws you on the yeah. ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a pile driver. <laughs> yeah. Wham! Yeah. It's and like, and it walks off, away. and it says like, "Cause Stone Cold said so." And you're yeah, like, yeah. "God damn, no, bro!" You better off just walking away, <laughs> save your ankle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I uh, was um, privy to watch a kid get bit by one though. That's when fun. I was in uh, kickball in elementary school, this kid would uh, not play kickball, so he just sat down oh, yeah. in the outfield, mm-hmm. and one crawled up his pants and bit him like on Ooh. the bottom of his thigh. That's super nice. He <laughs> had to go to the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah. the panda ant was first described to uh, science in 1938. Damn. And fa- right? 
and is found in dry coastal regions of Chile. Um, mm. Like many wasp species, and unlike true ants, panda ants do not live in colonies and also do not have queens and drones and workers. Panda ants get their name from the dramatic black and white coloration of the females. However, don't get too comfortable around panda ants because they get their their common name of cow killer ants mm, yeah. from the incredibly painful sting that they can deliver. Oh, wow. And it usually lasts a very long time. Only females can sting since their stinger uh, in these wasps is modified of the ovipositor. Mm-hmm. Um, these wasps have a lot of really cool and interesting adaptations. One of their, uh, one of, uh, yeah, this is super cool. One of their extreme sexual demophor- demo- dimorphism. <laughs> sexual dimorphism. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Jesus Christ, Drew. Well, kill yourself, <laughs> kid. Females have no hurt yourself. Females have the stingers mentioned above, but they have no wings. The males are larger, and while they lack stingers, they have wings. Oh. The differences between the sexes are so dramatic that it is often very difficult to determine what the two sexes of the given species are unless the two are actually seen mating. The males oh. are in many species are so much larger than the females that they actually pick the females up and carry them in flight during mating. Damn, come fly with me. Come fly with me, Fucking girl. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a Latin on a whole different level. Right? What? Yeah. Show you the world. After mating, the male sets the female down, and she then crawls into the underground burrow of other bee or wasp species. The larva of these other ground nesting bees and wasps will become the host for the growing panda ant larvae. Oh, wow. Yeah. What happens is the female panda ant will lay a single egg beside each host larva of, or pupae she finds. These eggs hatch at the panda, uh, and the panda ant larvae eats its way across the host larvae. Damn. The panda ant grows inside of the host larvae, feeding off its tissue, eventually killing it. Once the larvae panda ant matures into adult, it feeds on only nectar. Just like yeah. our our, uh, our yeah. last homies, the homie, the homie old T Hawk. Yeah, so they're they're all about. Uh, apparently, wasps just really like fucking up everybody else's environment. You oh, know? Yeah. They're just. I like, mean, they oh. they they're known to be angry. Yeah, old guys. Uh, another cool um, adaptation is the incredibly strong exoskeleton of the wasp, like we were talking about with those velvets earlier. Mm-hmm. So strong that uh, entomologists often have difficulty getting a steel pin through collected specimens damn yeah holy shit yeah this hard and strong exoskeleton helps reduce water loss which is useful because these wasps live in dry and sandy regions of chile where water retention is a major concern obviously their hard exoskeletons also allow them to um, invade the underground nests of other host species so they're not going to get fucked with. Like, oh, they get yeah. attacked by all these other, like, species and yeah. stuff. And they're just like, yeah, 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 I'm a tank, dog. Yeah. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a middle <clears throat> schooler punching a UFC guy in the face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, very little is known about the status and population levels of these wasps due to their limited geographic range and restricted nature of western side of the Andes Mountains. They will probably be strong, uh, be strongly affected by climate changes as the dry conditions that exist within the temperature ranges these insects seem to favor are pushed uphill. Hmm. So they're being pushed to, of, of course, extinction extinction again. And, uh, you know, like uh, one of the things I read that I didn't put in here was a female can lay up to 200,000 um, eggs, hmm. but they're still looking at extinction. That's crazy. That, it's fucking nuts. Which leads us to the penis they resistance. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the penis snake. Uh, oh, the old peen snake. It's a weird looking guy. So uh, also, I'm gonna. I'm gonna, also not a wasp. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm gonna try to uh, not butcher this. Uh, what it's actually called? It's a tritocoana. A tritocoana. It's a penis snake. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so two preserved sp- uh, s- specimens of the penis snake, originally discovered in Brazilian rainforests, uh, were all that were believed to exist of this ra- rather unusual creature. Found in the late 1800s on an expedition, the species of Caeculean was discovered, rediscovered in 2011. Mm. So it took them that long to rediscover the shit. So they said they seen one back in the 1800s. Uh huh. And then 2011, 2011 was like, oh yeah, this damn thing. We mm. forgot about the mm-hmm. the dick in the trees over here. <laughs> 
So the penis snake, as it has since been dubbed due to its appearance, is yeah, the largest of, this of the good. few known lungless tetrapods. Its species, Caeclion, is a group of limbless, serpentine amphibians that are snake-like in appearance but have rings um, on their skin like worms, like earthworms. Mm -hmm. Um, Can I I hit you guys with a couple other common names for this? Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Manaconda. (laughs) Manaconda. Oh, you're on Wikipedia. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. And floppy snake, <laughs> floppy snake, <laughs> the flop snake, huh? The flippity flappity, the flop snake. Oh, Mr. Flappy, yeah. <laughs> the old push and rope snake. Eh? Oh, Jesus, <laughs> the penis snake is twice the size of the second largest lungless tetrapod. It is a limbless amphibian which has a body similar to that of a snake with rings around it, much like that of an earthworm. Like I said, the head is broad and flat and features sealed nostrils an enlarged mouth, and a mobile cheek. Mm. There's also a fleshy dorsal fin. And there's also a like, World War II helmet situation going on there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Penis envy? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they typically have a well-developed right lung along with a uh, vestigial left lung. There are others that have two well-developed lungs. These partic- this particular species differs from these um, as it contains no lungs whatsoever. Um, okay, with still yeah. nostrils. Capillaries fill the skin, which uh, permits the exchange of gas, and there, there are muscles in the skin of the penis snake that have yet to be found in any other living organism. Yeah. Well, that's crazy. So, that's yeah, they're, they're actually kind of stumped. They yeah. can't figure out how it breathes and or anomaly. how it stays alive. And the anomaly, anomaly. Yeah, because anomaly. most of the other tetrapods breathe through... Like salamanders and stuff, they have those little like uh, feeler kind of deals, right? And mm-hmm. they do it through like a gas exchange. Mm-hmm. These don't have that at all. That's crazy. And uh, yeah, and so yeah, it's it's fucking weird. Um, let's get into eleven interesting facts about these weird penis little guys. Um, there's a excellent picture of a Donald Trump style wig on, on, a, a, penis on a penis snake. And that like is a, like awesome. A bunch. Pretty great. Makes me happy. I I, so I the penis snake that, is yeah. not actually a snake or a penis. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Thanks to visual similarity to human penis, this animal has earned many nicknames. Yeah, like you said. <laughs> penis snake, manaconda, and floppy snake. Yeah. Oh, flop snake. <laughs> no flop, oh, flippy flap. Oh, flop snake. There is no understanding <laughs> on how the penis snake survives. As a lungless animal... There are very obviously several challenges. With specimens being located in uh, the Madiera River in 2011, a warm, slow-flowing body of water, scientists question how the snake breathes anyway because warm water contains less oxygen. Mm -hmm. These snakes are not believed to be burrowers, as most of that group are. Penis snake relatives such as the lungless salamander and other lungless tetrapods are aquatic. As a result, it is a popular belief in the scientific community that they are as well aquatic. The name given to the genus, the penis snake, is classified under hints uh, are classified under hints at a features of the uh, hints at the features of the animal. Obviously, yes, of course. Um, <clears throat> Big the old dear. penis snake is considered a strong swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> coming from speculation <laughs> following the witnesses uh, witnessing of penis snakes on the surface of both the Amazon and Madeira River. Swimming skills are believed to be extremely excellent. Yeah. Uh, Most lungless snakes rely on their skin to stay alive, like I was saying before. As the penis snake is not really a snake, it is not uh, certain how it breathes. Lungless amphibians such as salamander use known um, cutaneous respiration is what they use. Mm. Um, This is when gas is exchanged through moistened skin. Mm Mm-hmm. Plethodontids breathe through their skin as well as the mucous membrane in their mouth. However, in order in order to absorb oxygen, these surfaces must be moist at all times. <laughs> yes, yeah, <Moist>. it does. <laughs> the penis snake lacks additional features common in other forms similar to it. The eyesight of the penis snake is supposed to be and believed to be very poor. However, it is capable of finding food, mates, and shelter by a sensitive sense of smell. It only has one eye, you know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, Jesus Christ. And it slings yogurt too, Hilarious. which is also kind of weird. Hilarious. <laughs> Little is known of what the penis snake feeds on, because the penis snake is a caeclia, caeclian, yeah, caeclian. 
that tetrapod. Scientists feel that it very likely feeds on small fish, worms, and other aquatic invertebrates. However, mm. much more research is required in order to be certain. Mm. Development projects in the Amazon are expected to impact the penis snake as well as other forms of life in the region. A series of hydroelectric dams are being proposed for the Amazon. Brazil has projected that a major project being undertaken um, will, resert, will result in 30 new dams by the year 2020. Damn. So, yeah. So they already nice. cracked that off. Huh? Yeah. Environmental, uh, environmentalists are critical of the project, stating that it will impact several rainforest species, flooding it, and a national park will require rezoning prior to some construction. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Ecologists fear that the dam building project will impact fish migration and reduce nutrient flows throughout the Amazon basin. Uh, the penis snake is believed to be native to just one main region and have a limited range as a result. Of course, it can't fucking see. Yeah. Found in the Amazon River and the largest tributary in the Amazon, the Madeira River in Brazil, the penis snake has yet to be found anywhere else on the planet. The Amazon and Madeira... Uh, are whitewater rivers that contain high concentrations of silt, which reduces visibility considerably. Well, it doesn't need it anyway. Mm -hmm. Speculation points to the possibility that the creature could be uh, found further upstream in Peru or Bolivia, but there have been no sightings and discoveries yet. And then the last, although the penis snake is believed to just inhabit the Amazon River and its tributary, the Madeira River, the region is best known for a completely different kind of snake. Like the, the anaconda. Mm -hmm. I think it's mean, manaconda. Manaconda. Ah. <laughs> Are you sure you're not talking about a, a boa constrictor? Oh, hey -o. Oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. Or maybe, maybe a python of love. <laughs> no. No, we peaked. We peaked. That was a very good one. Yeah. What about the boa constrictor? Was okay. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about a legless iguana? Yeah. Legless iguana, huh? huh? Anyway, Interesting. you see what I've been doing over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that is my creature yeah. corner for the week. Yeah. Creatures corner, if yeah. you will. Creatures corner. Um, I was gonna Ooh. do the Stromboli octopi, but uh, I need to probably insert it with a couple other creatures too because the only thing that i can find on it and if you're listening uh watch what is it octopus vo volcano i think is what it's called anyway it's a um i think you can find it on amazon prime but it is a really cool documentary about the octopus that the octopi that live around uh the stromboli volcano but nice. it's r really neat i'm gonna bring it in on one of the episodes but it's not enough information for a whole episode not even half so mm -hmm. no. yeah. because it's super like recently known about and, yeah, yeah. and the, the super cool things about it that i like are just just now being figured out yeah. so I feel you. that's what's up oh well, yeah. Well, yeah three three different creatures mm -hmm. six different names yeah and the three different creatures were none of those six names nope panda ant penis snake and tarantula hawk <laughs> all right Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a nice uh, fun fact hot fact of the week um yeah fucking weird yeah nature is different <laughs> shit built different and, yeah. and and just to, as a shits and giggles like if you're on facebook get a nice little picture of a penis snake and change your profile pic <laughs> yeah it's nice it's good it's cool <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's fucking, very inviting. The uh, <laughs> oh, the pen ant look like a fucking uh, like a um, like a fake fucking insect. Honestly, mm -hmm. also it's if you like want Photoshop, if, if you want to see something, <laughs> um, a, another creature that's really neat that wasn't discovered until two thousand and one or no, two thousand five. It's called the um, uh, it is a poodle moth, um, Venezuelan poodle moth, poodle moth. It's pretty dope. Oh, yeah. You yeah, got some justice. Those things are crazy. Yeah, like it's, they're pretty awesome. And they were only discovered in 2005, which is fucking crazy. Oh, oh. what the fuck? That's a yeah. mythical creature. Right? Looks like a it, plush toy. It, that's like what a, I was about to like say. It looks like a beanie girl. baby or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. It looks like a gremlin with wings. <laughs> <coughs> but, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, Creature Corner. Stay <laughs> informed out there, people. Um, yeah, hope y'all are doing well. Remember, you can support us all the time at... Friends, what no at anchor.fm backslash friends fact and fiction <laughs> and toss us monthly ducats, ducats. Uh, meaning money. And um, yeah, um, y'all stay light, you know what I'm saying? But move heavy, you feel me? Uh oh, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Keep your eyes clear, but <laughs> your heart pure. 
You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, we're gonna get through this cold time and get back to this the spring summertime vibes. You know what, yeah. what I'm saying? That's my that's when I thrive. But anyway, um, I'm Justin Hammonds. I'm saying love, live life because it's worth living, y'all. And I'm Drew Sheldon. I'm saying be kind, stay informed, make a difference. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, Grant Bramlett here. Everybody out there never liked you. I always loved you. Uh huh. And that's how we moving. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Um, this is. Um, Oh, especially if you come up with some more fun names for our penis snake. Yes, please. Penis yeah. snake. Yeah, email us at friends period facts period fiction at gmail dot com. Right. Um, right. But yeah. Anyway, um, you know see what? y'all next week, or y'all will hear us next week, mm-hmm. or I may see some of y'all this week. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Y'all will hear us next. Anyway, we're, this is a podcast called Friends Facts and Fiction, and we out. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for the next installment. Find us on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date on all things friends, facts, and fiction. Our Instagram handle is friends underscore facts underscore fiction. As always, please reach out to us. You can send any of your questions, praise, and fact checking to friends period facts period fiction at gmail.com. It's important to us to only propagate the truth, and we'll correct any errors we may have made. Your hosts and researchers are... Justin Hammonds, Grant Bramlett, and Drew Shelner. Our episodes are produced by Grant Bramlett. Additional producership provided by Grace Higgs. Our recording engineer is Grant Bramlett. Our editor, mix, and mastering audio engineer is Jeremy Mulder. Lighting design is provided by Justin Hammond. This has been a production of Friends, Facts, and Fiction. A double-headed penis snake. Yeah, a double-headed <laughs> penis snake. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, that, that happened. <laughs> I mean, you know, not every night, but it's, it's, it's every once in a while. I'm to shake <laughs> things up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little, uh, a little in and out. In and out man. Oh man! Yeah. Hashtag no burgers. <laughs> so I feel like a boa constrictor chokes you out. Right. Oh, oh come stricter. You choke it out. Uh oh. <laughs> and we out. <laughs> <laughs>